Jonathan. Okay. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 45. Wow, I couldn't believe we've done we're doing uh, we've done 44 of these already. So this is number 45. Um the the main topic today is really um to talk about the opening the the real eye. Um there are several names for that. The the real eye is not the third eye. There we we actually have quite a few eyes, and so the third eye is you know this this one here between our um, <clears throat> eyebrows that that one, and and we have our physical eyes, and then there is something called the real eye as well, which um, I've heard of the Chinese name, but I always thought that the 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 Chinese name is called um, it in translated to English is called sky eye or um the different names for or, or I think a more poetic name would be celestial eye. So I always thought that that's the same thing as the third eye, but actually no it's not. It's it's a it's a different location and a different function as well. So we're going to talk about the the real eye or celestial eye or the the it's called the tian uh, tian or tian yan which means celestial eye or the 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 sky eye whatever the the name that you want to go to to call it but i'm gonna um stick with the the name that sifu james gave it it is called the the real eye and um, there's a reason why he named it the the real eye and i will explain more so that's our main topic for today and i also um, just want to mention the procedure would be like before we're going to do a, a presence meditation first and then i'll go into talking about what is the 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 real eye and how we can start to activate and um, open that eye. So let's begin by doing our presence meditation. So take a deep breath in. So breathe in through your nose slowly and deeply. And let it all go. Breathe in again slowly and deeply. And then let it all go. Breathe in one more time deeply and slowly. And let it all go. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And use your breath, use these elongated breathing to assist yourself, to guide yourself to get into a relaxed state. Every time you breathe in, you can imagine that you are breathing in infinite possibilities. Or you can imagine that you are breathing in pure love, whichever way works better for you. And as you breathe out, imagine that you are letting go of anything and everything that does not support you in this moment. And just use your own breath. Do a few more breathing in and out to make sure that your body is at rest. It is relaxed.
And as your body comes into relaxation, let your mind slow down and fall into a relaxed mode as well. And if your mind is still very busy, then I would suggest that you imagine that you are taking an elevator that is taking your attention from your brain to kind of get into an elevator and just ask your attention to go from your brain and go down all the way down to your heart. And as you shift your attention and your focus into your heart, set the intention that you want to call back all of your own energy, all of your attention. Let go of any energy that is focused outside of you. Instead, call all of those attention, energy back inside yourself. Choose to be here in your body in this moment. Here and now in this moment. Let go of anything and everything that is not in this moment. Choose to pay attention to yourself. Choose to pay attention to what's inside you here and now, in this moment. And when you do that, feel what that feels like. To be present to yourself. Remember that feeling. And when you remember that feeling, when you are back inside yourself, then you can take a deep breath in and come all the way back. Welcome back, everybody. So let's begin today. We're going to talk about the real eye. So I am actually just going to um, bring up my cheat sheet <laughs> for... Today. So we're going to talk about the real eye. Okay, so real eye. Before I talk about the real eye, um, let me actually talk about one thing first. Let's talk about what, what are eyes for? Because um, there seem to be quite a few eye. We have the third eye, we have the the physical eye and now we're talking about you know real eye and and so let's actually back um back a few more steps um, back out a few more steps and actually look at what is an eye for what is the eye used to do what are, what do we use it for so um we create reality we literally create um 
the reality that we see, hear, feel, taste by our senses, by our five senses. And actually we have more than five senses, but let's say by our physical senses. I'm just gonna talk about physical senses for now. So um, the eye, our physical eye is created so that we can see the reality that we are in or the reality that we have created for ourselves. So for some people, seeing is believing. So that's what the eye is for. I, the eye is to pick up all the information outside of us. So the, um, the, <clears throat> the reality outside of us, um, let's see what I'm looking at right now is, I'm looking at some um, patio lights and looking at my window, there is my, um, there is my cup of tea that I have light um, in my room. Uh, so all those things, I see those things around me. So that's what my eye does, is give me a visual cue of what my reality looks like in this moment. It takes... Um, my eye can take all the information from outside and pass it through my, my physical eye. And my brain will interpret all of those signals and create an image for me to convince me that, okay, I'm in this, I'm in my room and in my room that there, there are all these things. So, so that's what the eye is used for is to take information or I should say the physical eye is is for is to take all the information um the the that is the physical things that are outside of me in my environment and um take all of those information and pass it through to my brain so that my brain can construct this image that I see that convinced me that, okay, I, this is what my room looks like right now. So that's actually what an eye is for. So then let me go and talk about what the third eye is for. Um, you guys have all heard about the third eye. And I know some of us has been working on opening our third eye. So the difference between the physical eye and the third eye is that the physical eye is to take physical things outside and, and translate all of those so that our brain can create that image for ourselves. The third eye is able to take the subtle information, the subtle um, energies, and interpret those subtle energies so that um, like all those information that is outside, but it's of a subtle energy variety and put it and, and have all of them in stream into our brain and our brain would be able to translate it into different things. So when we see, when we see something, there is a... Um, <clears throat> It looks a certain way. Whereas when you, or I, I should say, when I have seen a vision in my third eye, there is a difference in the the how the and uh, how the the image that I see. It's it's kind of like I'm seeing. I could still see that the. Um, it's like a a layer. So when I open my eyes, I could see that there is the, the my room around. But sometimes, um, even when my physical eyes is open, my there are cues that comes into my third eye, and I actually would be able to see a vision in my um, in my head that is kind of like a, an image on image because 
the the third eye created a a, a vision. And that vision is layered on top of what I see with my physical eye. So the difference between that's the difference between the third eye and the physical eye. The the physical eye is to see physical things. Third eye is to see subtle energy. Things that are of subtle energy. So it could be it could be um sometimes it could be a or oh, let's say a, a spirit or um, um a disembodied spirit that goes by and I would be able to see that. So it's it's not a it's not a physical person that's walking around. It's a disembodied spirit. So it is a subtle energy. So those are some of the things that is um, picked up by the third eye. But not only that, it could be when um, sometimes when somebody is talking to me, one of my guides is talking to me. Um, oh, okay, I actually remember um, many years ago, I had a change of uh, spirit guides. So one of my guides changed um, I used to have a a monk as my my guide. That's one of my guide, the guy, one of the main guide that would um, be helping me. And then all of a sudden, I felt this new guide coming in, and this new guide coming in, uh, I saw a vision of that that um, new guide coming in. I, I believe I've talked about this. In previous um, videos or previous episodes, as I saw this guy is has, um, it's kind of like an armor, but that the the um, the helmet and the armor on the body is all studded with different colored jewels. So that is that's not something that I saw with my physical eye. That's something that I saw with um, as a vision in my third eye. So that's what the third eye is for, is to pick up external subtle energies that is trying to communicate with you, whether they be simply just environment or whether it is another, um, a, a different person, a different entity that is trying to communicate to send thought forms to you through subtle energy. And so it's picked up by your third eye. <clears throat> so that's what the third eye is for, is to interpret external subtle energy and be able to create an image for you, to communicate with you through image. And so what is the real eye? this this real eye for the real eye is um it is also to pick up subtle energy but it is actually an internal subtle energy so it's not about outside coming uh, in it's not about interpreting any outside communication it's actually when your zero point, which is where your own, you are connected to your own divinity, connected to um, your own, the highest version of yourself or your soul. When, so that's where the, your zero point is, where you and your own divinity, meaning, so I want to separate that you, everybody has, a soul and we have um a soul that is for this lifetime and we also meaning that this the soul is there there are different function of something that we may term as a soul but um there is the soul which is our 
companion for this lifetime, meaning that they have all the information for this lifetime. And then there are other parts of us, sometimes we call that a high self, where it knows us and it has always been alive and always will be alive. And that's the eternal soul. Um, the eternal soul. And that that eternal soul, it's also part of us that is the divinity, the divine part of us. And that part of us is accessible or available to us through the zero point. And so when you activate your zero point, there is this energy that comes in that is you. It's only a very different version of you. That energy comes in through your zero point. And when it comes in through your zero point, it actually can go through in your body and it hits a place in your body that's called the, the real eye. And when your um, real eye is open, you would be able to see information that your um, divine soul communicates with you. So that is why I want to talk about the, the real I now. Because we are getting to the point where we, um, uh, depending on who you are and where you're at on your journey, but we are getting to the point where everyone is, I would say, on a more accelerated um, journey to or, or anyone who who whose soul was chosen to move into the fifth dimension so all of those people is <coughs> kind of on a fast track to start to remember more and more part of yourself meaning that we are connecting with not just the 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 soul for this lifetime but actually to the part of us that is the divine that has never died and will and can never die. So that's why it's actually important for us to start to talk about the real I and also to, if you choose to, to open and activate your real I. So, um, and when you can when you activated your real eye and you really um, do the work in opening your real eye, the benefit is that you actually can create that communication between yourself, like who you are in this moment, and the divine part of you. You can, that's the communication. Um, because the third eye is gets its gets the energy still from the from your mind so sometimes when you get information when you see information when you try to interpret subtle energies through your third eye you it, there are still um chances of misinterpretation there are still chances of um, because it's going it's still you're still getting your brain trying to interpret what is coming in so there is still a lot of room for misinterpretation or depending on how much um, you have worked with your own ego your ego can still come in and distort the information and how you interpret those information so yes, it's the third eye can um, allow you to see subtle energies outside, but it's it's not very reliable. Yes, questions? Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm just I'm just a little bit confused with that. Um, is this the real eye? Is it creating communication between communication between your? Um, your earthbound soul and your um, eternal soul? Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. It is. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and Thank you. And that is, um, and that actually is a, <clears throat> gives you a lot of benefits. Because a lot of the times we, yes, we, we can, we can go to the different dimensions and use our third eye to get information and, and all that. But it's still, um, our brain still have to interpret those. But when you get the information from your divine soul, because your divine soul kind of knows you and, um, the reason why it's called the real eye is because your <clears throat> the what whatever it is that you get from your real eye, when you actually can open and activate and really get to um, have your real eye operating full function the information that you see there would be true true information because it's not um the information is coming from your divine self it's not coming from your brain which can be interpreted or <clears throat> misled by your own ego or other entities that may be playing with you and all that so that's why the it's we're introducing the real eye now so that's the <clears throat> benefits of the real eye okay this is internal though this is not external to you this is just inside you it, between you and your your higher self source. Yep. <clears throat> yep. 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 Okay. So, so you, so you guys can see the benefit of that, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty powerful. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so I'm going to share screen. So now we're going to talk about where it is first. Uh, um, Yep, let's let's see where is it? So where it is is so where is it located? It is located oh okay, misspelled. Okay. It's a soft spot, not a soft spot. So it's a soft spot that is at the intersection of the middle of your hairline and your temple line. Okay, so so kind of um this kind of see that this is the hairline so let's say this is the hairline so this is inside your head I'm, I'm trying to illustrate and your temple so if you draw a line through your temple or both sides of your temple then there's a line and this this vertical line where the vertical line meets the horizontal line that's where your real eye is located so let's um let's talk about this a bit more. So what do I mean by the hairline? So the middle of your hairline. So I so this is kind of the middle of my hairline. The hairline is where your hair starts. That's that's the hairline. So this is the middle of the hairline. And then your temple. So if you see where your temples are, so both sides of your temple, if you kind of just um imagine that there is a a line that links both of both sides of your temple that's it in your head and if you can drop a vertical line right from the middle of your hairline then when these two points meet so it for me it's right around here so it's kind of like um the um there is um so your your eyebrows when you look at your when you touch your profile so where your um forehead kind of there's some 
drops down a bit and um, and then your nose begins. So just around there, the drop where the, where the your forehead drops a bit into your your nose. So that's so kind of that's where that is. So you can see it's around here for me. So everyone, depending on how your head is shaped, they may be a little bit different. So if you kind of just um, draw those imaginary lines and and feel in your own profile, you would feel that there is a soft spot right around here where... Um, that's that's where the third eye is and it's inside your skull so if you kind of find it and just maybe rub it a little bit to start to wick it up okay <clears throat> any questions about um, where it is located everybody um fear about where it is so it's really it's really pretty much near your third eye um, but on the in, but on the inside, yeah, it is lower than your third eye, so it's okay. kind of yeah, it's a little um beneath the underneath the 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 third eye. But okay, it's, it's 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 close, but not the same. It's it's a little bit um beneath that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> So that's where it is located. So next I want to talk about is, now that we know what it is, we know where it is. So how do we actually uh, wake it up? How do we actually start to use it? So now we, how to open the real eye. So it's, um, these are kind of um, the guidelines to do it. First, you have to become really relaxed. So um, when you are, <laughs> I'm just looking at my own slide. I could not spell today. Be completely, so I'm missing a P. So be completely relaxed, body and mind. <laughs> so completely. So be really relaxed. So you have to get to the, the, the point where you feel really relaxed. Not just your body, but your mind as well. So uh, I remember there are a couple of things that we can uh, do to make sure that we actually relax. One is um, we can push, push up. In between your eyebrows, you push up. That would... Um, start to relax and the other thing is uh, that that usually relax the, the the top part of the body or the front of the body and um, and if you the other thing for for the you can also push up in your belly button. So, you know, so touch your belly button and then push up. That relax the, the back part of your body as well. Okay, so this is push up here, right between your eyebrows. That is to relax the front part of your body and when you touch your belly button and you push up from the belly button, that relax the back, back side. And also activating um, frequency 10. So 10, activate. That will um, kind of calm your mind down. So those are the things, a uh, few things that you can do to calm your mind and also your body. Or you can actually just breathe in, breathe out. Use your like the five, five in, five out breathing to calm yourself down as well. So there are a couple of things that you can do to relax your body and your mind. So you know yourself best. So um, figure out what which 
method works best for you. So find out what works best for you. But the idea is to get yourself to the point where you are completely relaxed, body and mind. Okay. <clears throat> then the next thing is because we are doing, we are activating the, the, the zero point. So we want to make sure that um, we have all the, we topped up all the five elements. So then you would do the holy fire activate, holy water activate, or go through all five of the different elements and just give yourself time to top up all of your elements. Okay, so that's the next step. And then when you have all those and, and you balance yourself, you balance all the different five elements, then you start to activate your zero point. So zero point activate. And once the zero point is activated, then um, the energy would start to come up from your, so your zero point is around here, it will start to come up. <laughs> so you have to close your eyes because this, when you open your eyes, you are you, um, receiving too much information. The, the, so you'll be distracted. So you have to close your eyes. And then, um, when, and then when you activate your zero point, as you close your eyes, you would presumably be able to see the, the, the energy coming up from your zero point. And what you're supposed to see is actually a golden arc. So let me share a screen to, to let you see um, what it is that you, you would see. <clears throat> so what you, like, if all goes well, meaning that, you know, you, your um, zero point is, has all the energy and you don't have trauma and there's, there's nothing that is clouding your communication with your, with your divine self, then what you should see is a spinning golden color orb with your face in it, with your current face in it. So that's what this, so this first is actually what you will see if everything is perfect. However, nothing is perfect, of course. Uh, like most of us will have some, may have some sort of um, trauma and all those things. And so <clears throat> what can we do <laughs> when, uh, when we have all those things going in? Then what can we, we what we can do is, um, so when I started practicing this, so what I saw was I didn't see any golden globe, nothing like that, but I, um, I could see color. I see different colors. And I think at first it's a dark color. So, so the color that you see, so instead of um, a golden orb, so what is the orb? Um, the orb is actually your essence, your divine self is, does not have a body. A divine self does not have a body. So it will not present yourself as a body, but you will see it as an energy orb. It may be round like an orb, or for some reason, it could have been square as well, but it is a geometric shape. I'm going to say it's an orb because that is um, the most common. However, it could be any other geometric shape. So it could be a square, it could be a triangle, or it could be an orb. So it's a geometric shape and it will be golden color if all goes well. And it's kind of like a, a golden ball spinning around. Um, I didn't see that at first. <laughs> I still don't. I still don't see the golden orb. However, I'm, I 
then seeing different colors. So what does those colors mean? It's actually your, if that, that's communication. That's the communication that um, your divine self is telling you what it is that you need in order to um, start to, to see the golden orb. So if you see color yellow, that means that you need more earth. If you see a green color, it means you need more wood element. Red color, then you need more fire element. If it's a blue color, it's water. And if it's black or some dark color, then mean, it means you need more metal element. So all you have to do is, if you see a yellow color, then you just say, holy earth, activate. And just top yourself up with more of that element. And when you have enough of that element, the next one may show up, the next color, let's say green or black may show up. So you just call on that element until at some point you're going to be able to um, actually see the, the, the golden, spinning golden color ball. So questions, any questions so far before I continue on? Yeah, what do you say What if you see, when you see uh, yellow and you need yellow, more earth? Yellow is earth. Right, and, and what? how do you ask for it? Um, so then just a holy earth activate. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? Cool. Okay. So, um, and according to Sifu James, it takes anywhere from a couple of months to, so the, you should, uh, like, it takes about three, four months. It could be the, the, the quickest is three, four months of really doing this, practicing this, and setting the intention to open your real eye. It could be anywhere from a couple of months to a couple of years, really depending on how much um, how much interference, how much trauma there may be. So it's, but what you are aiming for is to be able to see that spinning, the the, the image that that energy, that your own zero point energy is communicating to you when you can see the spinning golden orb, that means it is a pure communication. So that's kind of the gold standard. <laughs> <clears throat> However, when you first um, practice, then practice, most likely you will be seeing colors. And so no, the color simply is, is a communication on what it is that you need to, you need more of. So which of the elements you need more of. And when you see, when you uh, top up your own elements, then you kind of still starting to see the orb itself. It may, <clears throat> it may not be a golden yellow. It may have um, some yellow in it and some other colors. It's simply, the other colors simply means that there are, um, it's kind of uh, impure impurities or um, I would say some energy blockage in there. So just keep on giving all the different um, elements to it depending on what 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 are the um, other colors beside gold that you see. <clears throat> and also, it could be because of trauma, whether it is present life trauma or previous life trauma. So that you simply have to just, um, using the zero point, is to just start to let go. Just set that intention to let go of those trauma. 
And it's, it's really about letting go of the trauma. If until at some point, it will get to the point where you would start to see it's just a spinning golden globe. So when you can actually see the golden, golden um, orb that is spinning, then what you want to do is actually start to so see it first and then start to control it. Control it meaning to, let's say if it's spinning, then if it's spinning clockwise, then you ask it to spin counterclockwise. And you can ask it to move forward or move backward, move to the left, move to the right. So that's what I mean by controlling the orb. So you're just asking the orb to do things. And so that is really a way of um, starting to work with this energy, your own divinity, in a way that becomes... Um, obvious so you're creating that communication that um relationship so you're creating that relationship to a point where your divinity your divine self is willing to work with you so when you that's what the um controlling the left right and all that is and then once you've done that, then the next step or <laughs> when you get there is to, you can start to ask the orb to show you things. You can ask because that orb is really your divine self. So ask your divine self to show you, let's say, how to get out of you know some situation that seems to be impossible. For you or maybe ask your um, divine self to show you okay I have this problem um, <clears throat> or um, I I want to create um, let's say a an energy center so ask your divine self to show you what's the best way to do that so or if you want to see you want to find out the, the truth about some things that's happening out there in the world, then you can ask the all. So once you have created that communication and working relationship with your divine self, then it's just about using your divine self as a, a way to assist you in living a better life or whatever it is that you wish to improve on. Okay, any, so that's that's all I have to say tonight about the, the real eye. Questions, comments? How you make, which may be sure that you're talking with your higher divine self and it's not your imagination um so make sure that it is so so find out where the real eye is to so know where the real eye is Okay, know where the real eye is. And also um, the practice the zero point because I've been doing a lot of zero point meditation leading up to tonight. So, and and if you're not sure about the, the, the real eye, just keep practicing the, the zero point. Because the zero point is actually you you are opening up that portal to yourself. Okay, so seeing it with your real eye is you're just creating. So how do you know that it is really? Is, is that can you actually see? The seeing is believing. 
you can see things outside. So you that's a great convincer. So you know that it exists. So when you can actually see that golden orb from the energy inside, then that's your that's how you know that it is. You're communicating with you, your div your divinity. It's because most people don't see there unless you know you really you've you've really been doing the work. Most people don't see the golden orb the first time around. It takes a couple of months on average, a couple of months. So Excuse me, golden what? Golden orb. Do you know what an orb is? Mm. Okay. So um so an orb is a globe. Is a globe. You know, sometimes when it's you supposed to be up, here. It's supposed to be, you have to see it here. Okay, let me just say what an orb is first, okay? One step at a time. So the orb is, you know, sometimes when you when you take pictures, you see, you know, a lot of like round dots. Um, so those are actually orbs. Got it. Thank Each you. of those orbs um, is... So, so in some pictures, um, different places, they you may be able to see a lot of orbs. Those are actually um, really spirits flying around because spirits they don't have a physical body; it's just energy. So, the most efficient shape for a, a spirit is really um, an orb could be bigger or it could be smaller, but sometimes we can catch them in a, um, with, a, with a camera. So that's what an orb. So when you actually can activate your own zero point to the extent that the energy is strong enough to shoot up, because it will shoot up because it's, um, it will follow the um, energy of, that's within yourself because you you have the central meridian, you have the kundalini. So your the energy does not just stay around your heart, does not really stay around here. Energy moves, so it will move up. It will move up. So when it moves up, it will hit this part. It will hit the real eye. So when you um, start first start to to try to see with your real eye, you've never seen, you've never noticed it. You've never used that muscle. That's why you only see colors, different colors. So that's the process of working with your the, the real eye is to um, get to the point where your real eye is sensitive enough to interpret the energy that's coming from your zero point. So it goes through a process. The process is really to uh, make sure that like, you have all the five elements being balanced in your body so that the energy is actually can, can shoot up and can... Um, work with your real eye so that's that's the work and then when you start to see the the golden orb when you actually can see with the real eye you see the golden orb at first it won't be fully golden like there it will have a golden background but it will have other flecks of other colors then you know that okay it's, um, it's because they are traumas, present life or past life. So you have to um, let go of those traumas. When you let go of those traumas, you can actually see the golden light coming brighter and brighter. And it's more purely golden color. And that's when you can actually see your own face in it. 
because it's your divine self. So you would see the face that you have now, or you may see um, like a, a younger version of yourself. So it, it really depends. So when you start to see the face, then you know you're getting close. And then you start to work with the all. So that is really how you know that you're really communicating with yourself because you've gone through that process of working with your real eye and purifying and clarifying the energy so that you can establish that clean communication between your divine self and um, your own consciousness interpreting through the, the real eye. Thank you. Okay. Can can you can you be confused between can you be confused between your real eye and your third eye? Isn't it the same? They're not the same. No. No. The real eye. So the difference is that the real eye. Um, like the third eye, when you do the third eye, is, is usually your attention is focused outside because it's right. outside information coming in. Okay, yeah. Whereas the, the real eye, the energy, what it is interpreting is really energy that coming from yourself. Mm. Okay. So your, your focus is all internal. Yeah, your focus is internal. Okay. Uh, would... Winnie, um, the... Sorry. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm done. Um, it, it's, it's the light body um, connected with the orb or it, is it in inside, inside the orb or the orb con uh, the light body contains the orb and what do you mean by the light body uh, Be the, uh, I that's because um, I, I talked about the light body the light body is 13 inches yeah it's 13 inches from you so it's outside of you so then it's not uh, connected with the orb. No, it's not. No, your, your light body is an energetic replica of your physical body. Whereas oh, okay. orb is really your divine soul's energy appearing as an orb. So your divine soul energy, nobody knows what it actually looks like but your 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 real eye would interpret it as looking like an orb mm -hmm. and so that's that's the difference mm. okay thank you that clarifies yeah okay great good great questions thank you thank you for helping me to uh, make it clearer or not just I, I might be a little freaked out if I if I saw an orb with my face on it. I could be <laughs> no, a little. Freaked don't out. worry. It could it could be. Uh, like <laughs> you have a couple of months at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, a couple probably of months. Longer, probably much longer. You have to understand that you, when you see your face, it's not really your face because your divine self does not have a face because your divine self is just energy but it's your your own interpretation how do you know that it's you is be, is because you see your own face so that's how you know that it is you okay 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 <clears throat> Well, that's polite of them. 
<laughs> yeah. Yes, it's a communication. You have to understand that it's a communication. So, okay. <laughs> so yes, your defined self does not look exactly like you right now because you've had many faces through our different lifetimes. So it's a communication to you that this is you that you're looking at. Okay. <laughs> neat. That's pretty neat. <laughs> yes. Okay, so any other questions? You guys ready to do a meditation on activating the real eye? Ready. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> 